GM jobs you would not want right now heading into the draft and the offseason? What's the least appealing GM job? For the record, Priscilla and I would take any GM job. Any of the 30, if you're offering to us, we'd probably take it. <laughs> but these are the ones that would give us pause. Would I'm you get- really? I don't think you would. I don't think you'd take all 30. Yeah, sure. I'd probably like five. Um, <laughs> I'm giving you first pick. We'll go, we'll go, we'll alternate. You first pick, worst GM job right now. And I, I guess we should say like the parameters would be, um, you know, obviously lack of talent, um, salary cap situation. Do you have a go-to guy, the market, what's your owner? Like there's a million factors that go into this, but the big one is, could you succeed in that job? They, if it was given to you, do you feel good about your chances to actually succeed for the next four to five years? Your number one pick is? I probably put too much weight on ownership for this. I don't think ultimately you're, your goal you're is going, to who's, succeed. Who's my boss going to be? Uh, all right. <clears throat> this is so suspenseful. I have no idea what you're going to do. I know what I have as the number one pick. But you can. I think I know your number one pick. I think I know what it would have been, but I think you've warmed up to this guy, so you you don't want to make it your number one pick, and that's why you want me to go first. No, uh, I'll go I'll, first. I'll I'll say Sacramento would be the toughest one. At this oh, point. interesting. I had them lower. Yeah, in my I rankings, just, the track record isn't great. I wouldn't say that you look at the roster going, "This is going to be awesome." It's not a destination city, and as you have told us firsthand, by all accounts, with that heck of a nice guy. Yeah. Heck of a nice guy. Great guy. But it seems rather rudderless. And uh I would I would say that would be that would be the toughest one right now for me. Interesting. So I thought about them. I have them lower on my list. I like the fourth pick. I think Fox and Sabonis, they found something with those guys the last two months that I'm interested in. I like Davion Mitchell. Barnes either to keep or as a as a trade person. I think that could be fun. And I just think I at least I could make that work, right? If you gave me that job, I'd be like, all right, I got this, I got this. Like, this is something. My first pick, I just wouldn't feel good about. It's Washington. Do I have to it's build on the my team board. around? Yeah. Do I have to build the team around Porzingis? Is Kuzma thinking he's a max guy? I somehow don't have salary cap space, even though my team sucks. I also don't have a a top eight pick. I'm not really a free agent destination. I'm in a conference that has the Celtics and the Bucks and the Heat and the the Raptors, whatever the the fuck happens with KD. Yeah, that's our. Yeah, I I I would just not feel great. Sorry, Joe House, but uh, that's just not a fun job, and I don't know. You know, you're going out for drinks with your buddies. Like, hey, man, congrats, man. You must be so excited. So what are you going to do? And you just kind of go, ah, hey, well, you know, mid-level exception. Yeah, I think there's some good. Like, what do you do with this job? Uh, you buried the headline. You got to pay Beal $250 million, who said it, the decision was going to come down to winning. Yeah, I forgot to mention that part. Which it, okay, then where else are you going? And, you know, the Beal thing the it's entire brutal. time, I was like, I heard he just wants to stay. He wants to get that full 250 and then he'll figure it out later. What he should have said, he goes, this contract and my next trade demand will be about winning. All right. Uh, if, if, I, I, by the way, high. that's a little high. I thought you reached there a little bit, but you thought I reached. I thought with Sacramento, even though everything you just said about the roster is fair, I think like if you looked at Houston and you go, what if Jalen Green and the number three pick work out here? Like, what if I have like two things and I reset my salary deck? Like I could have a chance at re- really being dynamic. Houston wasn't even on my list. Yeah, no, I didn't have them on my list either. Okay, all right. Can all I right. say one thing about Beal and the Wizards? Please They're going to have to pay him. Yep. The move is to trade him. I just don't know what his value is. He's coming off a wrist thing. He's, you know, I, I think as people watch the playoffs and the two-way guys, you want your superstars to be two-way guys. I think that's really hurt guys like Beal and Mitchell from a trade value standpoint. People look at those guys and they go, if that's my best guy and he's not a two-way guy, where am I going? Am I going round one and out? What's my destiny? 
And to pay him $50 million a year, I don't want to pay anyone $50 million a year who can't be the best guy on a title team. And I don't think he can. Okay, I'm going to surprise you with my pick here that I even thought about taking number one overall. Okay. Phoenix. Wow. Okay, make the case. Chris Paul came in and fixed everything. This team was going to have some real, I think, problems. And despite what people think about Chris Paul now, again, after playoff loss, we've covered. Uh, I think if you let Aiton walk for nothing, which I'm still not, you know, I don't know if that's actually going to happen. Uh, but you still had an owner that was willing to mess with a team that was going to win over 60 games and, and had an amazing profile of a regular season team. Uh, Sarver, leaving out all the allegations in the investigation, well, let's just say we leave him out. He is one of the worst owners. And if you're this cheap, that you can't just say, hey, you know what, we have a good group here and we want to build it around Bridges, Booker, and Aiton post-Paul and try to figure out a way to fill in the pieces like almost every other owner would do. Yes. Then don't, then don't own a team. You know, I, I cannot stand hearing about yearly losses from basketball franchises when it's the equivalent of having a home where the insurance and the property taxes are high and you feel like you're stretched a little bit month to month, but you know that your home is going to triple in 10 years. You know, that, so like all of that always gets left out. You shouldn't own a team if you can't hang on to the appreciation of when you go ahead and sell this thing. So, I mean, the minimum is $2 billion now, I think, for a team. Right. So Because of I, the media rights coming. So you, totally, they're all doing fine. They're doing like, OK, you know, sorry, you're not cashing, you know, putting away tons of cash every year like some of the other franchises, which you probably still will be anyway. But I to have him be my boss, I, I would put him as like he's probably the last guy I would want to work for. It's a great pick. I'm jealous of it. And then just, on top of it, you just threw away that. Halliburton pick and he took Jalen Smith who's not on the team anymore. That would drive me I'd be so mad taking over that job being like, so wait, we had the 10th pick and that's gone already? It's two years later? <laughs> yeah, because I, I still think like as much as people would go, oh, you're going to be nuts. Like they still have a chance to contend in the West next year which I think is a fair statement. This is about being a GM. This is about partnering with ownership and going, can I trust this guy? What's this track record? And the track record's terrible. And yeah. once the Chris Paul thing becomes like when he's done, done, and depending on what happens with Aiton, like there's a path where this is pretty ugly in less than 24 months, especially when the investigation comes back. All right. So you went first. You took Sacramento. I took Washington. You just took Phoenix. I can't believe they're still on the board. I'm taking the Los Angeles Lakers. I have LeBron James in the last year of his deal the 20th season of his career, already talking about how he wants to own a team in Vegas, which, by the way, we have discussed many times on this podcast how that was going to be what happened, and the cat's finally out of the bag. I have Davis, who is now in year 11 or 12? Year 11. Yeah, it's 2000 drafts. This is 11th season. I have no idea what I'm getting from him, how healthy he's going to be going forward. I have no picks. My picks are gone. I don't really have any young players unless you want to get super excited about Austin Reeves. And the ownership situation is just bizarre. Everyone likes Jeannie, whatever. I, she's a very nice person, but it's a bizarre ownership situation. Just bizarre. And you have a fan base with huge expectations. And I just think it's, it, it's going to be a really dark next few years. And I think that's a really hard job. Because if I took the job, I would try to trade LeBron right now. That would be my move. I'm not winning the title next year. I would really try to aggressively try to turn LeBron into something back and then try to figure out what I have with Davis. But they're not going to do that. And then LeBron's going to leave after next season. And now it's just Davis. Well, what's going to happen with that? How many times have we talked about, well, he's under a long contract. Okay, great. He's going to want out of, out of the Lakers. So I just wouldn't want to be involved in any of that. No thanks. The ownership thing's a little tricky because um, I, I think if Jeannie weren't Jeannie, there'd be so much more criticism. It's just weird that that Jim Buss was destroyed by everybody in the media and then everybody says Jeannie's the best. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Now, you could say as simple as, hey, they ended up turning the keys over to Clutch with Palinka. They won a title, so it's completely different. All right, that's fine, but I, I don't know if that's necessarily the best way to judge the two tenures. Uh, 
Mm. And knowing that you have this this really weird season coming up here with, you know, the Westbrook stuff and and if there's any solution to it whatsoever. They're playing the Westbrook thing exactly like we predicted. Yeah. They're making it seem, oh, no, he's, no it's going to be great. We're going to make it work. It was all Frank Vogel's fault. Yeah. Wow, well, this didn't work. Cool. But what do you got for your... I, the reason I don't know that I would take him is that you're still maybe the number one destination for anyone. Good. But, I, I would be fired by then. The problem yeah. is I'm getting the job, and by the time there's daylight at the end of the tunnel, I'm getting blamed and I'm getting fired like Frank Vogel did. So I'm like the caretaker for this heaving corpse for three years as they wait for stuff to shake out. Now, if they end up getting Kyrie in a week, who knows? Who do you have for your third pick? Portland. I don't think any Ooh. players want to go there. Ownership yeah. influx. If I'm hired yeah. now, I'm going to get fired by the new owners. I have a superstar that does, by all account, everything I've ever heard is that he likes being the guy and having everything cater to him. I don't know if he's going to feel that way with a bunch of draft picks. Um, so the one thing that I still have that I'm excited about, that's tenuous. And I think Portland just on the whole is not exactly like, I don't think NBA players are like, that's exactly where I want to live and hang out. Well, you didn't mention the Dame contract. No, what is it? Four more years? We get up to 50 million, right? Whoa. <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm going to get you the numbers. Dame, uh, is it three 40, more years? 42.4, 45.6, and 48.7. Yeah. The next three. It's pretty rough. When, and still no idea, like, what was, how bad was that stomach injury? Was that like a debilitating injury? What was going on? They have the seventh pick, which isn't nothing. Um, other than that, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I've, I, there's, so I had Utah as my next pick because that's a team that basically has this Mitchell Gobert thing that everyone in the league knows is a problem and they have to move on one of them. Gobert makes so much money, I don't even know really what they could get for them. And then Mitchell, I think for what his fan, what the Utah fans would think he was worth in a trade versus what I think the league thinks he's worth in a trade, I just don't think they have a lot of moves. And if anything, I wouldn't be shocked if they just came back with these two guys again and they were like, we're going to make a greater commitment to defense, they hire a defensive coach, whatever. But um, I just don't think they have a lot of moves. That's that's a tough job. Danny, also, I think, is going to do it the right way. I think he's going to like take huge swings. That's what he does. That's his history. He's not going to stay with these two guys. I don't think so. Better ownership than Portland. Um, hmm. Is it a better destination now than Portland? Portland is, uh, I don't know, um, not historically, but I think Portland's changed a bit. <laughs> I've always heard years. that NBA players like Utah. Yeah, it's always been a thing that's been out there. Once you get there, you kind of you kind of like it a little bit more. So I would, I would, I thought about Utah too because you have this thing. But at least with Utah. I know I could just bring everybody back and still be kind of good. And maybe something yeah. breaks my way. And it hasn't really happened. And the Go Bear playoff thing versus regular season thing, I don't want to argue with anymore with anybody. Um, but the Go Bear contract is disgusting. It's 38, it's 41, it's 44, and it's 46.7 four years from now mm. with a player option. So probably pick that one. Also, you'd have to go to the games and watch them again. All right, who do you have? Next pick. Philly with the Harden Max. Oh, I had them too. But only with a Harden Max. No Harden Max. I get to watch Joel. Well. Yeah. No, I would Joel, even, Maxi. Well, wouldn't even think yeah. about it. Great fan base. Creative. Fun owners. What if it was Harden for two years at the Max? No, not on the list. The, the five year Harden Max, I'd be like, so you guys don't have cable? The five year Harden Max is, I, I don't even. Do you hear people saying he's going to get it? I've heard so many Harden rumors with different teams that they're not going to, they're absolutely not going to offer him the max, that they want to sign and trade him. I, I, I don't know what to believe anymore. I'm out. The last time I had real intel, this time I, I've heard so many different things that I don't know what to believe. No. I mean, what's I, the craziest Harden thing you've heard for the summer? I wonder if it's the same thing I've heard. 
Well, mine's, to me, the crazy one is giving him every dollar he's eligible for. All right. But it's not crazy in the world of different guy. Okay, you tell me, like you're talking about him going somewhere else. This will get aggregated. So have fun. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to get aggregated. My next, uh, you took my next pick, so I'm going to go with. But that's only, again, Sixers fans. That's only with a Harden full max. Fair. So, I have Brooklyn as my next pick. <laughs> Even though that's the that's, best that's team ridiculous. we picked. That's ridiculous. I just think that I would not want to be in charge of that team. I'm out. I would just, I, <laughs> like, I have. But you have, you have great ownership. You have. A coach do that's I, easy to get along. Do I have great ownership? Yeah, I think they're pretty good owners. Yeah? You don't think so? I don't know. They just let these two guys come in and completely uproot their culture and the whole thing. And no, 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 no. Basically no, no. let them no, be the no. GMs. You're forgetting. When Kyrie and Katie went there, it was because of the culture they had built. Kenny Atkinson. Yeah, they and then they loved- completely they right. threw it in the dumpster. But I don't think they're going to bring back Kyrie. I don't. And I don't know how Durant's going to handle that. And I, I, my prediction is probably not well. And what happens if Durant says, I don't want to be here anymore? Now what am I doing as the GM? How many Durant destination teams are there? And now I'm looking at like Miami and I'm trying to talk myself into, can, can we get Jimmy Butler and Hero for Durant? And Miami's like, how about just, how about just Hero and Duncan Robinson? And I, I just think it'll be harder to move Durant to a team that would say, all right, if we trade for Durant, is he going to be happy here? And I think he's going to be unhappy if they ditch Kyrie. Durant from Tatum? I wouldn't do that. Health-wise, uh, it's not an absurd Durant's, thing to turn down. This could be his yeah. 15th season yeah. in the NBA, you know? Or 16th. He was 2007 draft. So, yeah, and you think, like, the amount of tax, they already have an expensive roster. And I just, I, I don't think there's a ton of moves with that. And I have to deal with the Ben Simmons thing. I mean, you got that, too. I did. That's a tough job. All right, last pick for you. Charlotte. Oh, okay. What's the case? I like the Atkinson hire. They just, they brought in a guy that wants to coach people. They just got rid of that guy in Borrego. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, uh, your best player doesn't play. I think there's going to be a little bit of a growing pain thing with LaMelo of like, this is awesome in your dynamic, but there's going to be some other stuff we're going to need you to do a little bit more. And MJ is an owner. You know, he's MJ, so he, he gets kind of treated differently. But there's what evidence is there other than he's really bad at being an owner of a basketball team? And it's not really a destination place. And uh, they've got to figure out some financial decisions with some players that I kind of like. But ultimately, you're probably, as soon as you pay them, you go, shit, I can't believe we're paying this guy this much. It's a good pick. For my last pick, I had Atlanta. I think they're in a weird spot and they clearly have to make moves, but everyone in the league knows it. And I think that's a hard job to take over. I've got to pay Trey at some point, the max or super max, whatever he's worth. I'm not sure ultimately how far I'm going with a guy who can't really guard anybody as my best player, as we seem to realize every year when we get to the final four, how how important defense is. And then who do I put with them? They got weird contracts. The Collins thing is weird. Capella, Gallinari, I think, is expiring. Um, they're going to have to pay Hunter. And they're, it just feels like they're going to just get locked into this 43-44 win team unless they take a huge swing, which might be like Ben Simmons, somebody like that. Who knows? But um, I think it would just be a really hard team to manage the next two years. And, I, and you're the fall guy if, the, if none of it works. I do like, though, that it seems like they're ready to load up. Maybe he almost give you too much talent. But then again, who's the one guy that comes back? It's the four for one. It's like, yeah. that's the team that needs to just... Now, that would be a good Bradley Beal team, right? Something yeah, like my, that. Some my, sort of sec- a re- <laughs> legitimate second star. Yeah, that would worry me a little bit, like backcourt defensively. But, and, and, <laughs> yeah, but when, you're already bad defensively, so right. you might as well just lean into it and try to outscore people. Yeah, I don't know if I'd pick them yet, but you know they were incredibly disappointing, and I would think, based on stuff you hear, that they'd be ready to kind of load up to go, all right, you know, we, we have all these pieces. I mean, that's what's so 
awful about this season for them. Because when the season first started, I thought, I'd watch them and go, look at all these guys they have. Look at all the talent. Look at the depth. Look at the different things that they could do. And it's like, oh, they're actually, they're not going to be that good. You know what's interesting about this exercise? There's no like disaster of a team. There's no team that you is was just clearly the number one pick where you go, wow, that team that has yeah, or like, like Orlando has some options to to yeah. maybe look really good in two years. Houston, you, know, you Detroit, made the key Houston point. Jalen and the number three pick, those two assets plus our guy Shangun. Um, I wouldn't mind running that team. You I haven't know? given up on Garuba yet. Hmm. But like, think about if we did this in 2007, how fast we would have been fighting oh. to make the Knicks the first pick, right? They're like, oh my God, it has to be the Knicks. They have no picks. They fucking suck. Their so nobody picked maniac. the How about that though? Nobody picked the Knicks. I think they have moves. I think they have cap space and they have picks and I like their young players. And I think there's, you know, they the, the Derrick Rose, those kind of contracts, they can get out of those after next year and... It, there's ways to extricate themselves out of the situation they're in. I'm more worried. Like I look at Washington, it's like, all right, you're you're going to pay Porzingis and Beal a combined seventy five million a year, so you can be a nine seed. You hope. <laughs> I mean, that is just awful. <laughs> <laughs> 